And this is the Fox News Alert. As we await a formal 2020 announcement of some kind from former Vice President Joe Biden to enter the 2020 race, the woman who initiated a national conversation about Biden's inappropriate touching has plenty more to say about his anticipated candidacy. So let's talk to her. Former Nevada State Assemblywoman Lucy Flores joins us tonight. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Okay, so Lucy, I know that you have written just days ago talking about where this whole conversation went afterwards because there were some people who immediately reacted saying, listen, she's not claiming a sexual assault. She's not claiming formal sexual harassment. And then on the other side, you have people that, well, he's just a serial hugger. You say there's this gray area in between and kind of what you've been talking about has gotten lost in the mix. Absolutely. The, the basis of the behavior that I talked about was something much more serious than just a hug. I mean, that's where the conversation devolved into, but that's not where it started. We talked about the fact that I had no previous relationship with the vice president, that it was moments before a high profile event where I was supposed to speak to hundreds of people. It was unexpected. He was behind me. He held onto my shoulders. He got close to my body from behind, smelled my hair, kissed my head. All, all moments before I was supposed to do this event. And that is not a hug. That is just unprofessional, inappropriate behavior, no matter who does it. But certainly from, at the time, the second most powerful man in the country. And that conversation, I think, really got lost. But my bigger point that I was trying to make is that this isn't just inappropriate behavior by the Vice President of the United States. This is inappropriate behavior no matter who does it. Well, and I think there, there was something on a, on a blog called the conversation.com that kind of encapsulates some of this conversation. It says, um, Biden's cr alleged creepiness presents a test for me too. It presses us to consider how wide we want to cast the censorious net. Should it include behavior that's not overtly sexual? It also demonstrates that the goal of women's empowerment is often not aligned with the deplatforming of powerful men. And a lot of people out there have been saying like, listen, we like this guy um, because he happens to be on our team. We're not going to call him out for this. Um, but you say right. short of something like a sexual assault, there is this power dynamic for a lot of women who are in a situation, whether it's an office or wherever it is, um, where they don't feel comfortable in that situation saying to a, a powerful man, hey, don't smell my hair. It's not okay. Absolutely, 1,000%. And really the biggest reason why I decided to come out and actually say something was because this was a big part of Vice President Biden's behavior as far as his history is concerned. There, This isn't the first time that I've pointed out this inappropriate behavior. There's been pictures, there have been articles written, there are videos. So this was something that was very well known, but that wasn't taken, in my opinion, seriously at all. In fact, oftentimes it was made fun of. Um, people joked around. They said, oh, that's just Biden being Biden. I mean, he made a joke and, himself and a couple days later. Exactly, which was so incredibly disrespectful and frankly to me demonstrated that the words that he said, that he was going to take this very seriously, that he was going to listen and he was going to learn, to me that indicated that he didn't mean that at all if literally the next day he was joking about it. And so to me, like this really needs to be an expansion of this conversation about consent, mm -hmm. about this is my body, my space. You don't get to come into it. You don't get to touch me unless I give you permission or unless, you know, it's social touching. You know, I, I'm certainly not out there trying to say, oh, we can't give friendly hugs anymore and we can't, you know, touch one another when we're taking pictures. Of course we can. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the fact that as women, we have had to endure this kind of inappropriate behavior on the behalf of powerful men for certainly as long as I've been alive, but you know, for forever. And, and we have gotten to this point now where women can speak out and they could say, you know what, no, maybe you could get away with it before because okay. we didn't feel like we could say something, but me, now we can Lucy, and we me, can call it for what it let is. Let me quickly ask you about this because your detractors, and there are many critics and you knew they would be out there once you came out, they point out that you were a supporter of Bernie Sanders back in 2016. Uh, they question your political motivation, and there have been other accusations. I want to give you a chance to respond to that. 
it's entirely inapplicable. The, the reason why women end up talking about their experiences with powerful men before they're about to be confirmed to something or run for something, et cetera, is because that's when the conversation becomes um, widespread. That's when people are starting to talk about and starting to vet these people for the things that they are are trying to to do and so mm -hmm. obviously it's applicable here mm -hmm. because we need to have this conversation about uh, vice president are joe biden's entire history as a candidate would you vote for him could you support him i have said many times that in the primary i will not be voting for him i will not support him um, i have many problems besides this with some of the positions Policy that he's taken in the others. past but yes, but okay. certainly for for others, they have the they have to make their own decision yeah. about it. I just knew that this was an important aspect of his history that needed to be discussed because well, it was not being discussed. Looking at the polls, it looks like for now, a lot of voters are OK with this conversation, but you opened it up and we'll see where it goes from here. Lucy Flores, thank you.